Throughout DePaul's history, its students have contributed to the university's character and created distinct student experiences that have changed over the years. Sometimes these experiences have followed broader trends in university student life, and sometimes they've been unique features of the student experience at DePaul. And while many aspects of student life and culture have changed over time, certain features of the DePaul student experience have endured. When classes first began at St. Vincent's College in the fall of 1898, there were seven faculty members and 70 students. Those first students were young Catholic men who lived in Chicago's North Side neighborhoods. Athletics were an important part of student life in those early years. Students used the large field behind the college building, known as Father Smith's Farm, to play sports between and after classes. The field was also used by the football and baseball teams to compete against other colleges as well as businesses and independent clubs. By 1907, the year that St. Vincent's College was rechartered as DePaul University, campus had expanded to include new buildings, the Lyceum and the College Theater. With these new buildings, student life and activities expanded beyond athletics to include things like literary societies, science clubs, and student organizations, which held their meetings in the Lyceum spaces, and campus speakers and theatrical productions, which took place on the college theater stage. A few years later in 1911, co-education was introduced at DePaul with a summer school program that offered a degree-related teaching qualification for Catholic women. The first issues of the Minerva were published, a literary journal and chronicle of life at DePaul that provided an important outlet for student voices through essays, poems, and notes on campus activities. And while most student organizations and extracurricular activities were still largely male at this time, the Minerval had a number of females on staff as editors and contributors. DePaul also established a second location downtown for commerce and law students in the Tower Building at Michigan Avenue and Madison Street. The two campuses eventually became known as the Downtown Campus and Uptown Campus, with each beginning to develop their own unique identities, student demographics, and campus cultures, which really grew and diversified throughout the 1920s and 1930s. This has been referred to as the college spirit era of DePaul's history, with yearbooks and student newspapers, dances, football and basketball, and fraternities and sororities prevailing. The College Theater building was remodeled into a gymnasium, renamed University Auditorium, and came to be known as The Barn. Dances, Blue Demon basketball games, and student-produced dramas and musicals were all held in The Barn, which was essentially the social center of the uptown campus. Downtown, due to the success of the law and commerce programs, DePaul decided to build its own 17-story building at 64 East Lake Street. Students hung out at the restaurant on the first floor of the building, saw cops were held monthly in the theater on the fourth floor, and there was a strong fraternity and sorority life at the downtown campus. The common student experience for both campuses, though, was the shared commuter routine between home, which was Chicago neighborhoods for most students, and the university was characterized as a city school for city people. Some of DePaul's more enduring student traditions also got started around this same time and lasted all the way into the 1970s and 80s. DePaul freshmen could easily be spotted by the green beanies on their heads, which were required to be worn on campus. And for a brief period in the mid 50s, beanies were replaced with little demon bibs. Kangaroo Court was a mock court created to punish the freshmen who violated the beanies and bibs mandates with things like dunkings in Lake Michigan or shaving cream pies to the face. Beanies had to be worn through the fall until the annual pushball contest 
freshmen could lose their hats if they beat the upperclassmen at push ball or be subjected to another week if they lost. The signpost was another tradition that began a little later in 1949 as an orientation guide made for students by students, which was distributed to all freshmen and contained information about campus life and activities. Freshmen were also required to carry the signpost at all times or face penalties in kangaroo court. Student life changed quite a bit in the 1960s. The campus culture that had been developing since the 20s around dances, fraternities and sororities, athletics and social clubs had all dropped off by the 60s and 70s. Student life and organizations during this period shifted to center more around social service and cultural and racial identities. It was a new generation of students that were focused more on social and political issues, activism, and civil rights. Protest activity in response to racial discrimination in higher education and at DePaul, as well as anti-Vietnam War demonstrations, took place on both campuses during these decades. By the 1980s, student demographics and the campuses had changed. More DePaul students were coming from outside of Chicago, which meant that the Lincoln Park campus had developed into somewhat of a residential campus. The downtown campus was officially renamed the Loop Campus and had expanded to three buildings, and new programs in the Loop and the School for New Learning brought in more adult students. These changes meant that student life and the culture at the two campuses was more distinctly different and more personalized. Student organizations reflected these changes and were centered more on special and academic interests. Going into the new millennium and to today, student traditions include things like FEST, the annual student-run Spring Music Festival on the Quad, and Chicago Quarter, today's version of the freshman tradition, where first-year students take Discover Chicago and explore Chicago courses to get them familiar with the city, its people, and its organizations. But despite these changes in student life and campus culture over the decades, DePaul has retained some of the intimacy and openness from its early founding years, what is now often referred to as personalism. This history of student life and culture at DePaul is documented in the records, papers, photographs, and memorabilia held in DePaul Special Collections and Archives. If you have questions about these collections or about university history, or if you want to share your own memories and perspective on your time